there, boys and girls. I'm Nick in the States, and this right here is the Indio 66 Deluxe by Monoprice. Did an unboxing of this a while back, and this is the long-awaited, clamored-for full review. Now, the Indio is not trying to be a Telecaster. It's not trying to be a Stratocaster. It's definitely trying to be a Les Paul. And in fact, if you look at the lovely shape of the body itself, it is a rather faithful interpretation of what a Les Paul should look like. And then you get to the headstock, and that's where things go off script. Now it's sort of like PRS meets Gumby. But to give them credit, it is something different. It's not as ugly as like the Harley Benton flat top Johnny's headstock. And I think it, it works, and it has a secondary meaning beyond just the aesthetic. If you look at the strings, they cross the nut and pretty much go straight up to the tuners. And experts for years have opined that because the way the Gibson spreads the strings out after it goes through the tuners, it causes the well-known Gibson tuning instability. Insert the comments here saying that really good Gibsons don't lose tunability. They play all night and never had to tune it ever. I don't know what you're talking about. But, yeah, it's kind of a well-known thing. Whereas this guitar tries to do more like PRS, and I will tell you from huge amounts of scientific research on my part, meaning the six or seven times I pick this up a week in my office, which is where this guitar stays for now, it's almost always spot on in relative tuning. And actually, the neck's super stable so that it's on regular tune too, meaning it's not like all the strings are just in tune with each other, but it's also in proper E tuning, 440 hertz. Yay! Anyway, so that's actually kind of interesting. So, to get the haters out of the way, there is a reason for why they did things in this manner. Moving on! This is your classic kind of Les Paul formula of something related to mahogany, something related to a mahogany neck, something related to a rosewood, which I think this is actually a rosewood fretboard. Cool. Trapezoid inlays, bound neck, a medium jumbo fret, some sort of plasticky nut material, and some vintage style tulip tuners. Set neck construction, of course, because a bolt neck Les Paul would be sacrilegious. Or cool and cheap. So, anyway, let your conscience decide how you feel about that. Two volume, two tone, with very, very nice tone knobs and volume knobs. I really like, actually, the way they look. They look high quality, high class. Stop tail, tunematic. It is the not ugly Nashville one, so it does not have that little piece of retaining metal in the front there that so many people seem to really eat. So that's cool. Two chrome covered Al Nico humbucking pickups, which I'll tell you, they're not horrible. They're not exemplary. I was recording uh, some riffs with this to kind of re record my intro um, earlier this week, and they just didn't really push things around. They need a little help. I guess they just needed a little bit of help, and that's probably the biggest weakness on this guitar is those pickups. The other thing is, if you bought this from the pictures on their website, it looks very much like a Cherry Sunburst guitar, but in fact, it's very much like a Honey Burst guitar, and I think that's because the instagram -y filter they were using to make them look awesome took the red highlights and really brought them forward. You can do a lot of fake, funky stuff with photo filtering. But... The quality of the metals on the bridge, the chrome plating, looks really good. The weight of the guitar is right in the, the seven-ish pound range of where a Les Paul should be. Talking about the neck, it's, it's a little chubbier than a slim taper, but it actually gets thicker and girthier as you go up it, uh, more so than some other Les Pauls I have from a transition. I, each time I pick this guitar up, I really kind of enjoy the neck. Three-way switch actually feels really good. The knobs have a nice degree of just smoothness to them. Um, I dig it. That's that. Action, actually, action, A-C-T, I-O-N, is actually really, really comfortably good.
each time I sit down and play it, it reminds me a ton of my Harley Benton L450 Plus, to the point where I put them side by side and realize there's slight changes in the body, like the cutaway is ever so slightly different than what a Gibson does, and this little curve where it hits the top here has ever so much of just a slight uphill compared to how a Gibson. Tiny, tiny, tiny stuff. You'd have to really squint to notice it, but I'm just like that. The other guitar I have that has that same exact profile is the Harley Benton L450 Plus. So perhaps these guys came out of the same lovely factory somewhere over in China. Digging it. We're going to go through some tones, kind of throw some things around, and we're going to come back. When we come back, we'll talk about just overall impressions having owned it and played this guitar for the last couple months. See you in a sec. are nice clean it's very cool i think through the tone of uh, the the mark 5 it's a bit much on the driven stuff um i think the bridge doesn't really stand up as well as a neck pickup does i think the neck pickup clean is very nice the bridge is tasty and i think if you push the amp a little bit with the bridge it's cool um overall it does all the things that a les paul should do as i said earlier it's i really enjoy playing it because of the slightly bigger neck which suits my preferences how i like um my next to be set up, really. Uh, the action is really great. Playability is good. No fret bites that are there. The nut is actually cut pretty quite well, whereas if I look at the height of the string as it crosses the first fret, it's just where I want it. I wouldn't change anything with a nut, even if it is perhaps a cheap plastic nut. Um, it It's really cut quite well. Um, likewise, you know, from a fit and finish, from the knobs, from everything, I really dig it. The weight's cool because it's not really showing off as a Les Paul. You know, it's not super heavy, but I will admit to bias when I pick up a Les Paul and it's super floaty, lighty. Um, I do think of it slightly less, whether that's right, wrong, or whatever. I'm just telling you really how it is. So overall, I think these are like $229. One of the other things to do is sign up for Mono Prices mailing list because very often, very, very often, um, they send out coupons, and recently the coupons were as good as 20 or 25% off. So I bought this at full price, but I'm pretty sure that with sales and with stacking coupons on, people have gotten these for as little as $159. Um, I think I paid $229 for this. So keep your eye out, and there's free shipping offers, things like that, in time. If you like them, just be patient, and you'll find yourself the best deal. Should be noted, too, like I bought this myself. Modern Price didn't send it to me. Straight up, just my opinion. Um, and overall, I dig it. This guitar... We'll be getting an upgrade coming up soon. This I've had a pair of Tesla Shark um, Iron Gear pickups for a while. They're supposed to be Alnico 2 Slashy. They are Zebra uh, humbuckers. They're going to end up going in this guitar very soon, uh, and it'll stay here kind of as the 
Les Paul's stand-in in the office for any other Les Pauls that come in and when the reviews are shot here. With that, yes, I've been Nick in the States. Of course I have issues. It's been a pleasure sharing them with you today. Thanks. Trooper 8675309 to base. Go ahead, 5309. Base, we have some intruders here who haven't yet subscribed to the channel. Shall I detain them? 5309, subject them to two options for more videos. Good call, base. That should bring them around.